toward the one, the perfection of love, harmony, and beauty, the only being, united with all the illuminated souls who form the embodiment of the Master, the Spirit of Guidance. Welcome to this video. It's part of my series in introducing the practices and principles of universal Sufism. And this video is about one of the most distinctive of Sufi practices, whether they be classical or traditional Sufi practices or practices in universal Sufism. And this is the practice of what is called zikr. The word comes from the Arabic word that means remembrance. And the idea behind zikr is that you find ways of constantly reminding yourself that the divine is with you or that you rest within the unity of the divine. And as I've mentioned in a couple of other videos, there are a variety of ways in which you can do this. And in fact, in common everyday Arabic speech, this is done constantly. Uh, references to uh, the divine or to God are omnipresent so that, for example, um, it's very common to say bismillah uh, whenever encountering something that one finds a little bit distressing um, or a little bit stressful. You might say bismillah, which literally means in the name of Allah. And the idea behind that is that um, whatever this distressing thing is, you sort of try to pitch it up to a, to a higher level or you put it within the, the protection of Allah. Um, it's also very common to say, say, you, say um, someone is asking you a question and you don't know what the answer to that question is and you think you should know because of the context. It's very, com it's very common to say something like a stuff for Allah. And that literally means, I'm sorry, or in the name of God, please forgive me, essentially. Um, so Allah is, the, the name of God, Allah, is often attached to other phrases in order to, in a sense, remind oneself that God is always present in these human transactions. It's also very common um, to say, Alhamdulillah which literally means praise be to God or, you know, and, and Muslims say this uh, or Arabic speakers say this as frequently as we in English might say, oh, thank God. You know, they say Bismillah. Um, and if you tell your friend that you are going to meet them tomorrow at some point, uh, you might add to that a Astaghfirullah, uh, not a Astaghfirullah, but Insha'Allah. Insha'Allah, which literally means if God wills it. If God wills this to happen, then, you know, if, if it's within the compass of the divine, then there you go. Um, uh, you can also say uh, Mahashallah, which means like congratulations or praise be, this, this has happened, you know. We say things like this in English all the time. Uh, and they, they do in Arabic as well. And and so these are understood to be just common everyday reminders of the divine in our life. And as such, they could sort of qualify as zikr. Um, there is, however, of course, more focused, um, more focused attention paid to remembering Allah. And this is what is generally referred to as specifically zikr or practices of zikr. And zikr is one of the most distinctive practices that you'll find in Sufism specifically. Um, and they do focus around the names of God or phrases that contain the names of God. So what is this name of God? Let's look at that first. This is a calligraphic representation of Allah, or the name of God, or the designation of God in Arabic. Now, I know that this is a very charged word in the West, but it is important to know where it comes from, what it does and does not signify. 
Um, and this is just simply what it looks like. Oftentimes, when names of God are referred to in Arabic or in Sufism, if they are some, if they are visually represented, they are just simply shown in their Arabic uh, because of the the beautiful calligraphic representations uh, that are part of that. the The name Allah is ancient. It is it has a a Mesopotamian, Mesopotamian origin and is related to the, the ancient Sumerian Babylonian term El, which meant God or high God, uh, or Alat, which was a female representation of God, uh, um, and Elohim, which is the first designation of God that is given in the Hebrew Bible. In Arabic, the the term Allah or the name Allah is a is derived from a verb and the verb is wahila and the verb wahila is a very specific understanding of love it's the kind of love that you have when you deeply and passionately fall in love with somebody or something to the point where you cannot really think of anything else. And it isn't romantic. It's understood to be a deeply passionate attachment. It doesn't even have to be to a person. Um, it can be to an object or an ideal. And this is the root that informs the idea of Allah. Um, and it's in Islam, it's understood that it's not just simply that you are to have this kind of love for the divine, but it's understood that this is the kind of love the divine has for you. That the divine is deeply and passionately in love with you and wants to be connected to you. And that sort of is at the heart of the Sufi understanding of the relationship of the human heart and the divine. Uh, we share that heart with the divine. Um, it's very un-Greek. We don't share rationality with the divine. Um, we share this heart. We share this desire for oneness, this desire for connection. And that is, that's really the core of what Allah is. And so when Sufis chant Allah, that's what they're connecting to. Um, they're connecting to that deep, profound, sense of heart connection, which is really believed to be the source from which we all come, from the source from which the entire universe comes. And so all the names that are attached to Allah, all his attributes, his or her attributes, because Allah, even though in Arabic it is gender, the gender is a he, there was a female form of this a lot. And so um, if you, if you press even Muslims to the wall, uh, they will say, oh no, Allah is gender neutral. <laughs> and there are many attributes, many of the beautiful names of Allah, like Rahman and Rahim and, and Ghani, um, all of which, and Wahab, which is actually the basis of one of my Sufi names, Wahaba, which is, all of which are feminine um, in origin. They are, they are feminine verbs. So Allah is understood to be um, neither male nor female, but encompassing and transcending both. And I mentioned Bismillah at the very beginning. And Bismillah, uh, this is the phrase, one of the ways in which the phrase can be written. Bismillah is understood to be, like I said, a protection um, and also a way of raising the statue, stat stature, if you will, the stature of any given circumstance. It's part of the reason why it's at the beginning of every surah in the, in the Quran. So for example, if you go to the Fatiha, which is the first surah in the Quran and is an invocation and a prayer in its own right, it starts out, Bismillah, Ar-Rahman, Ar-Rahim, Alhamdulillahi, Rabil, Alamin, Ar-Rahman, Ar-Rahim, Maliki, Amadin. So the Bismillah, and by the way, my Arabic sucks, okay? Um, <laughs> my pronunciation sucks. Um, that Bismillah at the very beginning is what pitches that whole, that whole prayer up. 
uh, and is understood to kind of raise its stature and make it into a divine utterance, if you will. So whenever you say Bismillah, you are making whatever you're doing into a divine utterance. You're purifying it, so to speak. And this is the first part of the Shahida, or, or Shahida, um, the Declaration of Faith in Islam. And um, La Hilala Ilala. La Hilala Ilala. There is no God but God. There is no, and if you think of love, there is no love but the deepest love. There is no love but that which is the most profound love. Um, so it's a different way of looking at it. Um, and the sh the, this um, phrase is part of the, the first part of the entire um, profession, which is La Hilala Ilala, La Hilala Ilala Muhammadir Rasul Allah, um, and Muhammad is his prophet. Um, this is in a calligraphic presentation that is referred to as um, the mountain of glory or the mountain of light so to speak. So you see um, Allah is at the very top of it, and then the rest of the shada is underneath it. Um, but um, if, you, if you pay attention to my little picture here down at the bottom, I, I will show you uh, the, the movements of a very particular Sufi zikr connected to this. As I mentioned in another video, uh, Sufi practices often are accompanied by movements, and uh, this using la hilala illala is very, very common, um, not only in universal Sufism, but also in um, classical Sufism. And it's very common to sort of sweep your head to the left and move your head up and then down. So you go la hilala illala, la hilaha illala, la hilaha. Il Allah, la ilaha, il Allah. And what that, the sweeping is, is you're sweeping to the left and down because uh, the, the direction of the left is the direction of the heart. And so then you move up, which of course is from heaven, and then down to the heart. So la ilaha, il Allah. And then there are other movements as you, as you can move from the left to the right. So la ilaha, il Allah. La ilaha il Allah, la ilaha il Allah, la ilaha il Allah. And that may look very simple, but do that about a hundred times and you'll find yourself entering different states of consciousness. Um, so this, these are very common um, zikr practices that are done both individually and in groups. And this is a chart representation of the 99 names of Allah. Uh, in tradition, there are 99 names of Allah that represent various of Allah's attributes. As I mentioned, some are female, some are, some are male, some are sort of in between or neutral. Um, there are many collections of these 99 names, and they are not identical, all right? <laughs> um, and in fact, it is said that there are endless, uh, you know, Allah's names are endless, uh, but there are some that appear on all of these lists, like um, Ya Sabur, which means the attribute of patience, um, or Ya uh, Gafur, which is one of the attributes of forgiveness, or uh, uh, ya Wali, which is uh, the attribute of the best friend, someone who is uh, your most beloved friend, or Ya Wali, uh, which is, um, I, I said Ya Wali, Ya Wakil, which is he which is or that which is most trustworthy. So there are some words or names that appear on all the lists and some that are separate. Uh, so in any zikr practice, you can pick various of these names. And by um, remembering these attributes of Allah, not only do you invoke those attributes of Allah, but you inv the idea is that you invoke them in yourself. You come to find them present in your own heart. And that's probably the most important place where they might be found. So it's become clear to me that I'm going to have to do another video on Zikr, but this is a decent beginning introduction, and I'm sure there will be questions involving this. So 
I will, I will end this here.